I bought this house in the spring of 2003 and suddenly found myself in the uncomfortable position of being able to make choices to live consistent with my values. I embarked on a process that profoundly changed the house and ultimately profoundly changed the direction of my life. In retrospect, many of the choices I made were consistent with the study of permaculture, where we make use of the natural energy flows we find around us. And we do this with holistic considerations. And what do I mean by holistic considerations? Is when you consider everything around you. So for instance, normally we say we want the front of our house to look nice. It's all aesthetics. We want our plants to look nice. We look at the back. We want it to look nice. That's our primary considerations with the facades of our home. Let's step back and look more at the house. It's a small house, a little more than 600 square feet for the house and 400 square feet for the annex. The street is in front. There's a fence in back. It's 50 by 150 square feet. But let's take a step back now. How many people, when they buy a house, ask themselves, which way is south? I don't think I did. But now I recognize south is a direction from which we get a significant amount of light and warmth in the wintertime. And so let's take a look at the south-facing facade. When I bought the house, it looked like this. Now it looks like this, where these windows allow a huge amount of sunlight and warmth to come into the buildings, providing a living area that's much improved. Recently, we've added these windows on top and opened up the roof so that this room now looks up at these windows. And in the winter, this will be a very warm and bright place. I discovered I don't usually use my oven but I like to cook beans. So now I have a hot box instead of an oven where I just bring the beans to a boil in the morning. I wrap them up in a blanket and slam them in there. And when I come home from school at the end of the day, I have beans to eat and I've used very little energy and I know I didn't burn them. Skylights. Okay, so I've made some mistakes. From an energy perspective, skylights are a disaster. Because they're in the roof, they allow a huge amount of sunlight and heat to come in during the summer, but not during the winter. And so, these are covers that I've made for the skylights out of aluminum coated mylar so that you can open them if you want, but otherwise they're closed and they keep the heat out or they keep the heat in depending on if it's nighttime or daytime. This is my hot tub. It is now a very energy friendly hot tub. Instead of using a lot of energy to heat it up, we enjoy breeding frogs and insects and different kinds of plants. So human waste. Here we have a situation where I have to poop, we need to deal with that, and plants need poop. And so we have another permaculture tenant, and that is each structure we make should have many uses. This is called stacking functions. And everything we need should be supplied by many structures. This makes a system robust or resilient. So for instance, if the electricity went out, if I had many things that provided me with heat and light, I would be much better off than someone who relied on electricity solely to provide them with heat and lighting. So going back to poop, we look into how can we use this resource and how can we rid ourselves from the waste at the same time. And so we look at composting toilets where we have a nice seal and a urine diverter. It turns out that poop doesn't smell so bad. It's actually the urine. So you need to divert the urine out and get it onto plants directly. And so this was a great system that I bought for about $1,000 and I realized that for about $50 I could make my own and it would likely work much better. And in fact it does, here we have a urine diverter and this is what it looks like from the inside. It's just a half a funnel that goes directly to the gray water and onto the plants. And so this is what it looks like open, this is what it looks like when you're using it, and this is what it looks like when it's closed because you want to maintain a good seal. Of course you throw a handful of sawdust over your poop when you're done and it really doesn't smell that bad. After three weeks the bucket is full and I dumped the poop in the compost pile with vegetation from the kitchen and from the yard. And here you can see after 10 days and after 30 days of composting. Let's take a closer look. You can see after 30 days, it looks like a Pink Floyd movie. Large amounts of earthworms digest the material. In a couple of months, it's dirt, but I wait about a year before I put it on my fruit trees. Okay, so the next thing we might look at is what is the lay of the land? If this is the uphill directions, it means water flows the other way. This allows me to address my needs of both ridding myself of my wastewater and irrigating my plants. And so we can make a gray water system that allows all the water from the main house to flow out front and from the annex to flow along the side. 
how can I make water flow uphill? Well, it turns out if I have a washing machine, it has a pump in it. And so we can see here, the washing machine discharges up high, and this allows the water to seek its own level up in the backyard. We wanted an additional bathroom and decided to put it outside. Here you see the composting toilet, and this is our shower. We decided to heat the water with sunlight, which works very well 95% of the days. The water is circulated through these tubes and is stored in a storage tank for later use. Now because the heating source is above the storage tank, we need a pump to circulate the water. It doesn't convect naturally, so we have a small PV panel that's connected to a pump that circulates the water only during the day. And here's the shower. And Tekuru had a small bathtub, which she's a little bit too big for now. Another attribute is it's very beautiful, we see with the trumpet vine. Another function is it's a great place to make love. Well, for animals. For people, maybe not. So why is this picture here? Well, one, after the kids are asleep and it's the end of the day, the shower provides a really nice transition time. It's a large, large area under the stars, even in February when it's 40 degrees outside, the water is scalding hot. There's something to be said for at the end of your day, having a beautiful place to talk to your partner about her day while washing each other's hair. Why else do I have this here? We see these animals that abound on the property that didn't exist when I first bought it. Since I bought the property and stopped using chemicals on it, there's been an explosion of wildlife that's grown in the area. So why else do I have this picture here? If we look at the leaves, I wonder what plant that is. And about a year and a half ago, it occurred to me as very strange that I should make efforts to support plant life that I couldn't eat. Since then, we've been replacing any kind of ornamental plant with food-bearing plants. The water from the shower alone supports a large number of plants that provide food. We can see a fig tree, guava, passion fruit, strawberry guava, and pomegranate. We take a look at the front of the house, we can see I've cut down the large trees and I've planted all fruit trees. I didn't have to replace all the trees because I could graft on lots of them. Here we see an ornamental plum with a graft on it. This is it a couple weeks later. This is the tree a couple months later. So that ornamental plum is not so ornamental anymore because there's a large number of fruits that it can produce. We take a look at the lemon tree and I have many citrus grafted on it. It now produces six different kinds of citrus. And we note something else. We think of our plant's functions is usually only aesthetic. But there are many different functions that a plant can provide for us. For instance, shading. A fig is strategically placed in front of this window. Because the fig is a deciduous tree, it protects the south-facing side of the house from the summer sun, but yet lets the winter sun in to warm the house. You can see in the summer, the leaves are on the tree here. You've noticed I've reshingled my roof to be white rather than the original dark green. This reflects a lot of the sunlight in the summertime which keeps the roof cooler. Also, during the winter time, the roof radiates less, reducing the loss of heat to thermal radiation. However, I have greater plans for the roof, as I show you next. Along the west side of my house, which receives a lot of sun in the summertime, I've planted this passion fruit, this green upside down passion fruit fence. And here are the grapes. Furthermore, I am espaldying, meaning I'm growing up the side of the house, apples and pears. And we can see this is the side and they are anchored by wires and it grows upwards and will ultimately grow up under the roof and I will see how much of this I can support on the roof as a green roof that I don't have to water. Green roofs are really wonderful because they provide shade and food but they're really difficult because they require you to have earth and water on the top of your roof. It provides a great load on the structure and also poses the difficulty of rotting. And so this is my effort to have a green roof so the plants can have their roots in the ground, can protect this side and the roof from the sun during the summer, and can provide me with food. Fruit-bearing passion fruit are just like ornamental passion fruit, except you get passion fruit. This year we had four gallons of jam. Another use of all this is to learn and to practice good horticulture and to return the nutrients to the earth to nourish the plants that nourish us. So we look in the backyard and I did want to have an area where we could sit and play. A nice flat area with some kind of ground cover. So we planted several different kinds of ground cover one year. And the one that thrived was the mandia. These tiny little, they're like spider plants. And so we dug them up the next year and broke them apart. Contoured the ground with a berm right here to hold the water if we had a lot of rain. 
We place cardboard on the ground to prevent the crabgrass from growing in, and in little holes planted the demandia. After a period of time, we can see it's growing very well. And this is a year later. I end on this, because it was in the making of this shower, in doing all the calculations related to heat flow and design, my daughter's mother pointed out to me I was more excited about the research I was doing in the backyard than the nanotechnology research that I was conducting at school with students. This realization has reshaped my commitment to studying sustainability and energy flows in my learning and teaching and research in the cross-cultural venue of the field school that we're developing here in Guatemala right now. So this is the last shot, our garage, and how we get around in San Luis Obispo. In addressing what it is that you might be able to do or want to do, what worked for me was just a process of exploration and learning and failing and celebrating the options I have. Give it a try.